sacred history living in your aquarium how's everybody doing sorry about that first stream I guess it started and then the computer decided to crash just like some people have decided to crash out of the hobby every summer since the beginning of time we'll wait for some folks to roll in here especially with the the weirdness that that just was, uh, that that stream opened and then crashed, uh, but hopefully we'll be good here. Let me know how sound and uh, all that is going pretty please. Uh, let's see here. Hey Misfits, what's going on? Good to see you, buddy. Jay's better room. Isabel, bonsoir. Uh, 3G, Betsy, hey Betsy, how's it going? How are you and all the Salukis doing? It's good to see you. So you still have your wrench. You'll always have that wrench. I miss you. I hope you're doing well. Uh, BJ Palmer, what's up? 3G, all right, everybody, you can hear me. You can see me. Let's roll. Sally Balls, Jubilation. What's up? All right. Well, then let's get going. Back room aquarist, shadiest man in all of YouTube on fish tube, or woman, but I'm guessing guy. Uh, let's see here. Sound stream great. All right. Cool. Great. That that's that's good to go. All right. Uh, Zen Ginger, what's going on? Good to see you, Muppet. Good to see you. Uh, right on. So today, as every day. Every day is today, and every day is tomorrow, and every day is yesterday, just at different times. But uh, if you guys have any questions, please just tag me uh, at Secret History Living in Your Aquarium, then your question. First you write that essay, the at symbol, and then the Secret History Living in Your Aquarium, you write that whole essay, then you can talk to me. Uh, no, it'll pop it up so I can see it and uh, help me do that. Um, let's see here. It's me says, watching the ads. Content soon, buffering. Oh, there's ads before this live stream? That's odd. I didn't set it to have ads, so I wonder if it's just stuck on default or something. Uh, Michelle, hello. Uh, good morning from Australia. Right on. Good eye, mate. Uh, Natural Aquarius, hello. So I hope everybody uh, and BJ Palmer, what is up? Everybody's doing well. Uh, good. Um, <laughs> Backroom Aquarius, uh, you're a man, gay male, but still very much a man. That's right. Gender and sex are different things. Let's see. Where's the comment today on Alex? Why are you wearing nail polish? By the way. <laughs> All right, guys. So. How's everybody doing? Techno Alla, Rich Harris, uh, Harrison, uh, we, we got lots of people. Uh, Mick, good to see you. Ah, we got that cream soda Dr. Pepper going today. So, if you have thoughts, concerns, questions, comments, uh, then, oh, 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 if the internet gets squirrely, I'll, have, I'll just do wire, or, uh, cell phone internet and then just burn through my minutes and data. Uh, Ah, oh, you like the metallic, huh? I, I like the metallic, too. I like this. It's it's like a slightly purple metallic. Uh, but I like it. It, ma it makes you pay attention when I'm pointing. And uh, it also makes me much more animated. Much more like, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm much more aware of my hands. So I feel like I'm on stage when, when, you're, when you're in theater and you're learning. You're supposed to learn how to gesticulate with your your words and your voice and stuff so anyways all right so are none of my tanks and tubs fun these days no my tanks are I'm I'm not burnt out uh, but I keep hearing uh, man I keep hearing a lot of people who are and apparently, according to my YouTube uh, watch hours, it's not any one particular video not doing well. It's not any of that. It's mostly like old content and 
when I, I'm uploading a video, like the other day I had one that I think had 200, it's only at 200 or 300 views. It's for this channel. Usually we get to a thousand in a day or half a day with a lot of uploads. Uh, so there, there tends to be, and it's happened every year that I've been on YouTube. I've noticed, I noticed it before YouTube as well, obviously, but, uh, there's this, um, trend, I guess, or, or cycle that happens every, uh, every summer. Uh, and what it is, is, you know, especially for around here in Seattle, we really, we really, really get this cycle. And, uh, it's, it's that it's, it's winter or, or fall and people start to get like, bummed they, they start to feel like oh man i can't go out i don't see the birds singing uh you know as i go for my walk in the morning and i don't see the uh whatever you know if you're near the water i don't see the the ducks and the and all the birds that have flown away for the winter and a lot of the animals go hibernate or hide you know you, you don't see them as much and also just life you know the holidays come up and it's that that gets a little stressful but you just go inside it's colder and everybody says um you know let's 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 bring that excitement that life that that you know the days get shorter especially if you're in in this part of the world like where i'm at in in seattle we really get short days the sun sets at four o'clock in december uh like 4 15 i think is the earliest and then uh rises at 8 30 a.m so we get some really short like eight and a half hour days for a couple weeks here and then you know and then they get longer again but uh and right now we're at the opposite end of the spectrum the days are super long and we've got uh things like mowing the lawn gardening going out real fishing camping um you know going and taking the kids to summer camps or uh, you know, there's all sorts of things that, that go on, but rather than being indoors and feeling like you're nurturing and energizing yourself by doing these tasks of, of taking care of your critters and things, it's very easy to feel like you're draining yourself. And so the challenge I think with burnout, it, it comes every year for me around this time. Um, to the point where now I don't fear burnout, I don't worry about it, um, but I prepare for it. And so that's why, let me, let's, let's show an example. So that's why these tanks right now, I mean, we're going to do our aquascape competition, obviously, but uh, I mean, that's why these tanks are growing out of control. I haven't cut them. I've let them go feral. But this is a good time to start growing your plants immersed, for instance. So I need to like suspend these lights so that I can get the immersed growth going uh, even better here. You can see a lot of this stuff's ready to go. This, this one's more than ready to be out. You're just going to chill up here for now. You're done. Uh, but, I mean, people are also working. That seems like a no-brainer. We've talked a lot about ponds and things lately, so I feel like we don't need to do that. But, I mean, even for me, because of the heat, I only have some of the lights on in the fish room right now. Um, I, I leave them on for, like, maybe six hours or so, days like this. And there's a few tanks that are low, uh, low energy consumption and low... Uh, the fish don't need the light so I don't worry about, at all about them but others that I, I that need a little more so like uh, you know this tank he, down here with all the half bit half beaks and rainbow fish and stuff I'm gonna always leave the lights on this one that should probably have the lights on too but then what happens is you start to build up algae and then it becomes a chore of man I gotta change water and then oh, on top of the water then it turns into well, I've got algae because I just haven't been enthusiastic about keeping up with the tanks. And pretty soon, you're just kind of behind. And, uh, yeah. Uh, Jubilation, I don't have uh, a timer for my lights either, really. Other than the Fluval ones that have a built-in timer, I don't use a timer on my lights. 
um, for the most part because I just come in and that way it makes me actually come in and uh, interact with the tanks and then I come in and I look like just now I haven't looked in this tank today but I'm looking and I'm seeing that there's some baby shrimp in here and stuff like that um, there's uh, the Anubius has been dislodged from its normal perch and it is getting uh, it's not like a rot but it's basically any of the tissue that's overgrown uh, is dead uh, is turning kind of that orange color and getting soft but all the fish are looking good. Well, they're hard to see through there. But all the fish are looking good. And so that's the important thing is that your fish health is good. But again, look at my tanks. I've got them set up so that they're just overflowing. They're not aquascaped. They're just overflowing with plants. And it's just a matter of uh, making sure that everyone has the, the food they need and doing the water changes keeping up with the water changes to me that's like the bare minimum and that's to me right now that's all i tell myself i need to do i don't put any pressure on myself uh, i guess if yeah if you're in the southern hemisphere things are completely different you guys are probably in your peak of being excited about keeping uh tanks and things but you know here we are and uh, by the way, here's the haplochromus. They've gotten much less shy. Um, so I figured I'd show them a little bit more. Here's the tank boss female. These are the ones that Lawrence Kent gave me about four months ago, five months, no, four months ago, I guess, yeah. And uh, as you can see, mom on the glass. And I was gonna clean it before the live stream today and all that, but I wanted to show um, you guys exactly what's going on in my tank i mean you can see look at all the mom look at all the the dust and stuff now that's not harmful my nitrates aren't high or anything um the fish are all fine and dandy and happy and schooling and doing their thing and in fact actually keeping the fish room dim on some days can really help uh control certain things like in this tank we've had an out uh, like a bacterial fogginess that's been pretty intense lately but we also have a billion baby little shrimp and a lot of pregnant female shrimp and so i'm just letting them hang out in the darkness over in this tank um we have baby uh bettas uh or we should anyways there were fry or there were uh, eggs all over the last two nights up in the top somewhere in here we had a bubble nest and then I stole some of them because not the best parent ever, new new parent, young betta, and I put some in here. But that's the extent of what I did and you can see a lot of the eggs right here are white and didn't hatch. So they may not have been fertilized, the male may not have even done his job properly because I'm not really seeing any uh, little wrigglers. Oh no, there's a few, there's a few wrigglers. So I'll get them some green water. They'll need that uh, pretty much immediately. So actually I should get them their green water ASAP from outside, uh, but that's good. So yay, the bettas from Aquatic Arts, uh, the, the placots, that's eating a planaria. So the, the other thing I like to tell people is like, don't feed your, t like you don't need to feed your fish all the time. Let them do some cleanup work in your tanks. You know, you've got all these little critters and I mean, look at this shrimp cleaning himself. He's so funny, he looks like uh, on, uh, what's that, Futurama, that show. Uh, he looks like uh, <laughs> the professor with squid, squid professor, what's his name? Man, I can't remember. Um, and then, uh, you know, everybody's out but everybody could do a little bit of work on munching on the algae in here and stuff. And as, as soon as you give your algae eaters and your, your gobies and things food, um, you're, I mean, they're gonna, they're gonna eat that. So like here, the snails are cleaning all the glass. It was dark, you know, but they're cleaning all the glass. They're doing their thing and uh, everybody's fine. And it's also been hot, obviously. So it's, it's been like 80, plus degrees every day and the fact that this room 
gets really hot uh, doesn't help anything. Also, I'm thinking I want to do full racks up here. Zoidberg, thank you so much, guys. Zoidberg. Uh, but I'm thinking I want to do full racks of five gallons. I was going to do the 2.5s, but it's, a, it's another breeding thing. I mean, it, it, they're just really tanks for breeding and then for keeping shrimp. Uh, the 2.5s are nice in that I can move them when they're full. And I'm kind of running a test right now in these tanks with the, they have uh, baddis in them too, but they one has tannins where its pH is five, and the other one has tannins where its pH is six. So, um, and I should be getting a bunch more tannin stuff soon um, from Aquatic Arts. They started carrying a bunch of new tannin stuff, so. I want to play with it and see what's out there. So a lot of times when I'm feeling, um, even if I'm not feeling burnt out, but I'm feeling like it's a chore to, to keep up with everything, that's when you try something new. I mean, that's why I've been going out, if you've noticed, um, in the uh, either on our Facebook group or if you've been in the Native Fish, uh, then uh, North American Native Fish group, then you'll see there too that I've been posting pictures of what I've been doing out catching actual fish. Um, so, you know, that's another thing you can do to keep yourself motivated or interested. No matter where you live in the world, there's gonna be fish that you can go out and find. Even if you live in Iceland, I think Iceland and Greenland are the two uh, least populated Hold on, guys. My hair is annoying me, so I just want to get out of the way. Uh, are the two least populated um, freshwater, like species-wise, diversity-wise? Yeah, Nanfa, exactly. Um, Nanfa has a really active Facebook group, and I've been posting in there. But also under the Members tab, if you guys are members, I've been posting pictures. And for the general public, I've been posting pictures. Uh, but I've been trying to, uh, you know share it around a little everywhere, put a little bit of stuff everywhere um, so that everybody sees something different. Uh, but there are so many subgenres and subjects within the hobby that you, in theory, shouldn't ever really be bored per se. Now, I can understand just being like, ugh, I've had enough of fish and, uh, and water and aquariums. I get that way sometimes too, and that's when usually I go into history or biology or something else. You don't need to feel obligated to be chained to your aquariums all the time. Just let them, you know, and I, I guess, you know, I, I just realized this, but this is why I'm a huge proponent of the nature tank or the, the planted aquarium with a pretty deep substrate and lots of surface area and a diversity of plants and animals and fish and all that um, because I can let my tanks go for a week without worrying pretty much in almost all cases uh, other than a few fry or a few really specialized fish um, and uh, it really helps yes aqua <laughs> Josh uh, Alex is 18% made of Dr. Pepper. That's true. Actually, maybe like 17% today because some of this is cream soda. Uh, ah, man, it's good today though. Um, let's see here. So everybody is saying when I start to get tired of my aquarium, uh, just go to a local fish store. I mean, yeah, that's another way to go about it and get excited about the hobby again is go look at someone else's stuff. Um, you know, right now, I, also, uh, I saw a, a blind fish keeper. Hey, how's it going, buddy? Good to see you, Brandon. Uh, thank you so much for joining uh, the membership. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I wanted to thank you guys. I was gonna show you guys even my analytics of the channel, show you guys some transparency of what's going down and all that jazz, um, which, yeah, so let's take a look. Uh, let's flip this around. And this is gonna be the old the old ghetto way that I used to do it where I just show you my computer because I didn't wanna set up 
the the relay stream and and deal with the cameras with the internet being as squirrely as it's been but if you guys look at this i want to thank you guys that purple line is return viewers so you guys are steadily i mean this is the last year this is 365 days um and steadily this last two months um has been really good uh let me show you guys like the last month for instance um pretty pretty steady if we go into where is it An overview is probably the easiest thing to do um and then we go to the last let's just do the last we can see the last 90 days if we want or the last year let's look at the last year because it shows kind of growth of the channel but to me that shows that we've been just steadily chugging along there's been some ups you know here and then it went down a little bit and up and down um and you can see that but we're kind of on a down with summer now pace uh i believe let's see where where were we that we had the infamous incident is probably right no it's not right there it's probably right in around okay so this spike here uh right in here is where uh joey and i had our uh bit of a beef going actually no it's right here because this this dip is where my channel got locked out and so if you actually looked at this graph, this should touch all the way to the bottom because I three days of nothing. Um, but then right after it rebounded, there were a number of videos, um, uh, one on translucent shrimp, one on can low aquarium light actually cause algae. Another one was on fish and, and uh, tubs, ponds. Another one was an unboxing of caradinas. Um, the aquarium guys feature, uh, and then also, uh, Bentley and I went to go visit Jason, which was really fun. I went down to go see Danikin, um, also got a big fish order in, uh, early June. Brandon, we had the blind fish keeper himself, uh, on the channel. We talked about, uh, immersed plants. And then uh, the big one was our uh, shrimp, like is shrimp keeping over, essentially. So if we look at, a lot of people were like, oh my God, is this the biggest video you've ever had? No, so there's, it's, it's done $187 since it's been here. And what day did it happen? Um, and so that's all going to charity. 150 of it already did go to charity let's see here um but i mean it dropped off real quick and then there was a little spike again i don't know a little while ago but um yeah so i just figured i'd show people that and then um when it says does it say what day i i re-uploaded it or anything um come on uh may 18th so yeah, it was a little earlier than I thought. So then the the video though that was getting good. Um, so in the last year, this is this is I made it says eleven thousand dollars, but then remember um, YouTube takes a cut, and then also uh, the government takes a cut of about twenty seven percent for the government and about well, I don't know thirty percent for YouTube or something. Um, but we've grown almost 10,000 subscribers. Um, uh, we've grown on top of the views from the year before, 1.7 million. So, I mean, I can't thank you guys enough, really. it's It means a ton to me. Um, just seeing how, how everything's been growing. And it's slow and steady. Right now, uh, click-through rate, everything's down a little bit. But even though even though the things are down like this is how many people are being uh, the, get the impression from the channel each day like at the peak here hundred thousand we're looking at the channel a day uh and then it fell now we're somewhere more like forty thousand fifty thousand a day scrolling through um 
you know, and the average duration right now is only 7.5, whereas usually it hovers around 12. So, in general, I'm just kind of seeing uh, a, a, a downturn, um, and that definitely shows itself in, in money, in views, and all that, but I just keep going with it, and I just keep doing what I'm doing and and trying to listen to you guys and pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, Alan, thank you so much for <laughs> the Dr. Pepper fun. Appreciate that. Uh, let's see here. Backroom Aquarius. Thoughts on Tidal Matrix uh, Biomedia. You know, I don't. I haven't really used a lot of their stuff, so I don't know. I. I. Uh, let me. There's something I'm kind of curious about that I, I want to look at. Uh, Tidal. Yeah, um, it's all right. Uh, to me, I, the ceramic stuff seems pretty similar. I know it's a little bit better, suppose, I mean, supposedly better, but to me, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I, I always think that, you know, at a certain point, they talk about how much uh, surface area this new whatever has. So let's see here. Let me grab an example so say this is your thing and this is your bio bead or whatever it's in your aquarium and you got a hundred of these and they're supposed to be colonized and then water flows over them and that is the surface area for your bacteria well then what they do is they make a version that's like this but has holes all over so it's like swiss cheese and it's a sponge, and that's essentially what the ceramic stuff is, what your actual coarse sponge filters are. And then you get the colonies of bacteria living all over the weird little matrix of Swiss cheese or honeycomb or whatever it may be uh, that makes up this. And actually, irregularities are good for bacteria colonies. Uh, whereas in other colonies like, like beehives or um, ant, mounds, things like that, um, uh, uh, what are they called? Termites, things like that. They like, uh, they have like a, a constant interval that they do things and they build things a certain way. But bacteria, um, and molds and fungi and things, it has a rhyme or reason that's based on nutrients or based on, uh, environment. But to us, it looks pretty like Mandelbrot, like, fractally just kind of sporadic and crazy um and that's why like some big holes and some little ones some flat areas and some rough areas in theory is pretty good idea for uh, bacteria however i always wonder at what point because we have alfuchs in our tanks and those are they have protoplasm which is not a ghostly not ectoplasm guys Protoplasm is the goo in between cells. It's the 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 jelly-like substance that is just I don't know life in in most cells uh, and keeps things suspended and kind of loosely in place. But that stuff forms a mat, and then they have cell walls or membranes. Walls are implants, but membranes that form alfu layers in these mats and certain bacteria will work with algae or it'll work with fungus or it'll work with uh, protozoans or bri uh, bryozoans um, which by the way I found with Lawrence Kent when we went out uh, this most recent weekend we found a bryozoan uh, giant giant colony I mean like the size of a watermelon uh, probably 15 pounds or something that we thought was bullfrog eggs that we accidentally scooped up and it was like it probably would have fit in a five gallon bucket volume wise and but it had no black spots like eggs would it just had the texture and slimy jelly look of eggs of bullfrog eggs in a mound but was way bigger and it turns out it, it's a, a bryo bryozoan so it's a colony of these living things but my whole point is that on a certain surface area, whether it's tidal matrix or it's uh, charcoal carbon filters that, that uh, also take out junk from your water, at a certain point, 
you can't, the, the bacteria is only so small and it starts to fill over gaps. So even if you have a thousand little holes on this flat surface, they start to turn into 500 holes because that film will grow over it. And then now anything inside of it is either maybe anoxic or anaerobic bacteria under there, which could be good, but it's probably not. It's probably just water not moving and it's probably just bacteria that's dead and kind of built up like a coral reef. Uh, so in that regard, I, I think that there's got to be a sweet spot of um, how fine your fil filter media is versus how coarse it is. And it's somewhere in between. I just don't believe in these super products, super, super materials or whatever that are supposedly so high tech that, you know, they, they've overcome that. Because if you look at the surface tension, even water itself, um, you know, you can balance a dome of water on a penny if you take a drop at a time and put it on a coin. You can actually get, you know, that the surface tension will create a, a little dome for you. And so uh, the same thing happens with the water and the cells that are uh, polar cells, they become polar, polar, or what's the word, polaric, uh, that's not the right word, magnetized, no, not the right word, but in any case, they stick together just for the fact that they have water in them, and that water's a, a polar molecule too, not to mention all the other ways they stick together, um, when they're a, a, li a colony life form, um, Natural, of course, well, when I get burnt out, I tend to move fish around, condense what I have, free up storage new, for new species. Yeah, that's another good way to do it, too. I mean, another great way to do it is to switch with friends. If you have friends locally or even in a, even if you have to ship them away, just get rid of the fish that you're not enthusiastic about and uh, get have some empty tanks for a few months if you have to. Uh, and then bring something else back in in the fall. Uh, or focus on your plants you know or don't i mean or take your plants and put them in a pot and put them outside and get them out of the house uh whatever it is for me it's generally that i want to turn down the amount of effort i have to put into upkeep on the tanks so i can go do stuff outside out in real real nature as they say <laughs> um by the way, guys, if you could hit that like button, if you do like it, if you don't, hit that dislike button. Just smash that dislike button. Because uh, we're at 40 and we've got over 85 people in here. Uh, and people have come and gone. So I'm just feeling lonely. If you could just, just, just ever so sweetly, softly, gently, smash the like button, please. Uh, Goose Not Maverick, what's going on? Uh... I'm going to be real honest right now. That video exposing Joey was the catalyst for me buying a membership. You know, okay. I, I wasn't going to talk about this much, and I'm not going to talk about it much. But I am happy that a lot of people have, have seen that um, and then looked at my channel beyond that. Uh, because it's the only video like that on the channel. I did leave it up because, you know, I... After it happened, a thousand of you were watching. Somebody must have thrown the link somewhere big on Twitter or Facebook or something. Because a thousand people ended up watching it live during the, the course of it by the end. That end part, it just ramped up from 200 people watching to like 1,100. And so people had had copies of it and they were uploading it online and Joey was su uh, not suing them, but DMCA takedowning them which would freeze their channel or lock out that content, pull that content down, even though it was my content, which is really wrong in my opinion that YouTube al allowed that to occur. They allowed him to report whatever he felt like as his without it even being verified. I mean, it should at least be verified that on the YouTube servers it was first uploaded to the person who says it's theirs or somewhere online, you know, tried to do a reverse image search for frames in the video, something. And then beyond all that, it tells you right there that if you falsely report something as yours that's not yours, your channel will be terminated. Did his channel get terminated? No, of course not. He's making way too much money for them. Uh, but it's very clear that he lied in the statement. 
because he said I didn't know I was live. I didn't know that this was going on. I didn't know that uh, we'd be uh, it ever be on YouTube. And he's commenting that he sees the YouTube comments. Yet in his written complaint, he he says the exact opposite right there. So they they were able to overturn it really quickly, and I'm grateful for that. And I don't like the negativity. It's still a video that makes me feel kind of gross and just weird because I had no intention of, of making him look bad when he came on. I wanted to get the story of the hobby from somebody who was an early social media influencer in the hobby. And, um, you know, I, I feel like we got a little of it covered, but hardly any. I had 40 questions that I'd pre-written and sent him like a year and a half earlier. And he just, he didn't want to do it. He wanted to just talk about his accomplishments in his format. Um, and so I just kind of went with it and took what I could get um, from that. But it's just, um, you know, I, I didn't post it, like I said, right away. I, I actually made it as private as you can make it without deleting it off your uh, your server, your not, well, not your server, but your storage space on YouTube. So it was, it was private, it was for the highest level membership, which uh, nobody had active at the moment. I'd only had one person who'd even had that level of membership at a, some point. And um, so nobody could watch it, but the comments were still on. If you'd already commented, you'd still get your, your comments to talk to. Because so many comments had already been laid down in the time that that was uploaded also, that there were a lot of exchanges. I mean, Joey was talking to people. And so I figured, I want to let people talk. I don't want people to say, oh, you're hiding stuff, whatever. Um, and so I just uh, let that stay, but the video not. And so then when I found out later on uh, that he was suing me and took it down, and then it froze my channel, that's when, and I got served online digitally through a real court in Palo Alto, uh, and due to the whole outbreak they were able to do it digitally by a video chat serve me essentially like some mitigation hearing thing uh i had to get a real lawyer and everything that's when i decided okay i'm, I'm gonna put it up uh rather than he was having a bad day we could have had a miscommunication even though i fought him on it live uh i decided against it and then he also sent me a bunch of harassment and uh, threats and offers for bribes essentially like i'll make you famous i'll i'll say you're my favorite channel and i'll put you up on my channel we'll do features all sorts of you know so um i didn't respond to any of that i didn't like i, I just let him message me and there were like 30 or 40 messages from him that just kept coming in over that period and it ended on the note of like i'm going to destroy you and your crappy channel and all your follower you know just really nasty crazy unstable stuff and that's why i decided to post it as well as the fact that a lot of people said that they've experienced similar things uh personally but didn't own the tape he owned the tape so to speak so i just figured i i wanted to, to touch on that but the the that has worn me out also um honestly that that was a bummer in channel history uh, but i'm really glad to see that now it's like my 15th biggest video it's not my number one best video like in a month's period it may end up who knows being one of my top videos but views and time watch you guys care more about shrimp breeding and things like that and that really really was moving to me but i do want to say that you know a lot of you guys who said that you were on here because of that um or met my channel met the community here because of that then that's really good um so, yeah. Um, let's see here. Uh, do, 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 do. I just want to catch up on the chat now. I bought some uh, Kabamba from my local fish store. She didn't know the variety listed. Can you name some? Uh, oh, yeah, the purple variety is usually just Americana or Caroliniana. It's usually just the, the purple and green Kabamba. Uh, but if it's pink and if it, 
imperial gold to it, then it could be um, it could be Fercata. But that's Carolin that's Caroliniana right there. And then the Americana is denser like this and it has a full round leaf rather than sectionals see how this one has sections that alternate that's the difference between Caroliniana and Americana then Fricata is down here it has sectionals again but much yellower leaves even in low light and then in higher light it starts getting rainbow colors it starts getting do I have any over here in the CO2 and everything it starts to turn rainbow and fiery reds and oranges and things. This tank right now, my wife hates. She said it looks really ugly. Um, the other thing is I ran out of this stuff and it's pretty expensive. It's 20 bucks a bottle, Brighty K, the potassium. And I was kind of curious what would happen if I stopped feeding this tank potassium all of a sudden, but kept giving it its macro and, and micro minerals. So it's got everything other than than the potassium really um and so I'm, i was just kind of curious what's going to happen but what seems to be happening is the the color vividness and the richness of the reds is is leaching out it's looking more washed out in beige colors the greens are starting to look more sunburnt or lime colored and stuff um but nothing too crazy detrimental so far i mean there's probably quite a bit still in there but it's hard to find the gobies boy the ania gobies see there's one up on that rock over there they are i mean they look ex identical to these needles or these needles <laughs> or these i mean they just look like that um uh, and i haven't seen my uh these guys hardly at all the transvestitis or even the plecos for that matter so there is a bit of, um, you know, like I need to do some upkeep. I need to sell some plants. I've got a lot of plants that are rare plants. They're plants that I care about, you know, and uh, we haven't had club meetings. And so that's the other major, major thing that I guess we haven't really talked about it, that's different than any year in the past. And that is that, yeah, every year in summer, people get burned out on the hobby. That's just life. But this year in particular, we also have a lot of people that have been off work and now they're going back to work or they have new jobs or you name it. I mean, all sorts of different situations are going on uh, with folks all around the world. And because COVID's over, you know, um, let's see here. Uh, I don't think there's any purple variants of real Kabamba. Yeah, there are, Dolan. Um, uh, the original Kabamba, uh, Ameri here, oh. we've got the, the Bible here, uh, of plants, um, also, I got a dip net today, I've been borrowing Lawrence Kent's for a long time, and he's someone who I'd love to have on the channel, he's a little private, and he's kind of a little more old school in that he does the, um, oh, what do you call it, uh, the lecture circuit kind of for all the fish clubs and i mean they pay good money and he's 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 got a, a career he's got a name and, and a scholarly title uh so, so to speak associated with that and now with the internet people are kind of expected to do the same amount of work in a week or a month as before you could be considered the upon a geaton or upon jeton expert you know, uh, and go around to a club once a year, and maybe you had a bunch of them, but things just moved at a different pace. Whereas now, where we all share the info, it's very different. Um, here's also some uh, real similar plants to Cabamba. Uh, this one here is the Mexican plant, um, which is Ceratophyllium. Uh, and it's just that's a hornwort from mexico it's just a specific kind but the cabamba uh there's also paleoformis there's one that i never see around here it's a yellow one uh and it's it's like puffball it's like a fluffier version uh cabamba fricata can also manifest if you give it enough iron red like that like a real dark purple 
but mine has always stayed very light rainbow colored uh, because of my soft water. Um, the other thing about in this book, I mean, there's all sorts of good pictures about the flowering of it. But here is the Cabamba Caroliniana. Uh, that is the the typical kind you'd see. But under the right light, that stuff, uh, under high light or CO2, that will definitely um, turn a nice purple. But I wanted to show you this too. The flowers on that one species vary a lot. And again, this book is incredible. Uh, I'm getting another book tomorrow. Um, well, also, I'm going to be getting George Farmer's new book, and I'm getting um, the uh, uh, Ivan uh, Mi uh, Mikolji book, too, the, the beautiful Orinoco book. Never paid $200 for a book, uh, but I did for this. I feel a little bit of buyer's remorse, so I'm going to be excited to have it and not have that, because I'm sure once I see it and look through it, I'll be really happy. Uh, but paying for it and just waiting feels so nerve-wracking. I just It just feels like so much for a book. Uh, but it's a thick book he put together. And I'll, I'll be reviewing those when I get them. I've got permission already to show pages. And in the case of that book, I got permission from them, and I'm meeting with Ivan and his sister, um, Pietra, I think her name is. Uh, I might be mispronouncing that. But uh, I'm meeting with them on Zoom tomorrow. And he's going to come on the channel. And we're going to chat. Um, so if you've seen his work in Venezuela and Argentina and uh, Peru, Brazil, where uh, Ivan Mikolji, he goes down, he sets up an aquarium next to the river or lake, puts in... Uh, hardscape from that river or lake and then like all starts early in the morning then he puts on a, a wet suit or a dry suit depending on where he's at in the world goes and, and takes pictures and video of fish collects as many as he can with traps and nets and things then he puts them in the tank makes a live aquarium and before the sun sets takes pictures with the beautiful sunset or the beautiful background and the aquascape right there next to it, which is just an incredible amount of work. Um, so, uh, yeah, Cabamba aquatica is the other general name for Cabamba americana, uh, and it it can really vary. Uh, the Cabamba aquatica in Venezuela looks just like the Cabamba furcata, whereas the kind in America, same exact species it just manifests very differently in high light at the equator versus not uh at the equator all right let me get through the the, the comments more wayne talbot hello uh welcome um rob 93 what's going up um, two bettas, what's going up? Started with two bettas. Son of Quack, hello. Um, oh, aquarium guys, thanks, buddy. Thanks, stud. You got the, you put the muffin in my stud, sir. I gotta talk to you. We have big plans. Robs and I have big plans, but uh, you know, burnout. <laughs> no, uh, we actually talk about burnout on the Aquarium Guys podcast. So that's another point that I wanted to talk to you guys about is that we go, we actually cover that on an episode. So if you feel like listening to that in the car or doing water changes or something, check out the Aquarium Guys podcast. There's an episode I was on. I think that's out now. I don't know. I, I guess I don't know how it works for the public because I'm such a superstar uh, being in that episode and all that uh, I just know that it got recorded live all a few weeks ago. It might still be back catalog, though, for all I know, which is very little about how the world works. Roman Chirac says, hello, Alex. I've been struggling with burnout, too. Father Fish gave me tips on regaining my interest. My indoor tubs are helping me lots. Lots of baby fish swimming amongst floating plants. Yeah, baby fish always, always, for me, make me feel revitalized. They make me feel like something's depending on me or I made their life comfortable enough that they didn't want to just barely survive and hang on. 
they wanted to thrive and bring new life forth into this universe, uh, you know? And uh, if that's a guppy, maybe I don't feel quite as accomplished as some rare species, but um, everybody's at a different level. Everybody's trying different things, you know? Uh, let's see here. Sally Ball's brother. Oh, we got a $5 super chat. Thank you so much. I very much appreciate it. Uh, this stuff's from earlier. I need to catch up. Jubilation, thank you so much for joining Secret Supporter. Like I said, all the memberships, uh, as screwy as YouTube's little system is, it is really, really, really nice to know I got a buck coming from, you know, at the end of the day, I think it's, I get to keep, uh, you know, uh, 70 cents to $1.30 uh, of each $2 membership, depending on uh, tax write-offs and all that stuff. Like, if I did everything perfectly i think i'd get to keep a dollar 30 of that um if, if i did my max write-offs which I, i'll try to do you know uh if i don't it ends up being like one or it ends up being like 78 cents on the two dollars that i get to keep um with taxes and youtube's cut and then i don't know there's also you know credit card companies or paypal or your bank there's a few other little fees in there too that in theory you should think about but you know i never do um uh blase benedict uh or is it blaze uh, uh but welcome uh, thank you for joining i really do appreciate all the folks joining this this uh super duper stream i appreciate it uh that, that helps me from feeling like i've been burned out um where can you get potassium uh I, well if you got actual potassium straight potassium you'd have to have it covered in vaseline or something like that because if you put it into water it explodes it is a extremely reactive chemical uh element and we actually had a cube of elementally pure potassium I want to say it was potassium I didn't acquire it my old roommate in college did he's a chemistry major and uh, it came in this jar like and then you had to undo the jar and within the jar there was another jar and within that there was a watery jar like it had like some solution in it and then there was a jar that had the like basically grease or, or um, Vaseline type stuff in it and then you could take out the the actual pieces of it and it, none of them were bigger than a little cubic centimeter or inch but he got that and he put together a cubic inch of it or whatever it was and we threw it uh, he threw it under water with just a thin smear of Vaseline which was super dangerous could have blown off his hand but uh, he ended up doing that and threw it off a dock during a house party at a lake and it blew up like probably like an eighth of a stick of dynamite or something it was very 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 powerful very surprising you can look up potassium reacts reacting to water it'll go off just from the humidity in the air if the humidity is over like 30 percent or something like that uh, it depends on the temperature obviously but uh caroline uh you are a total star. Uh, the guppies seem happy with the advice. Oh, good, good. I'm happy to hear that they, it helped. Anytime I give advice and it helps, I'm happy to hear that it worked. If it didn't, I'd love to hear that, though. Don't ever be shy to say, Alex, your advice didn't work. It made things worse. You're an idiot. Uh, no, just just let me know these things, too, so that, you know, that way I know when I'm doing something right or not. But I appreciate that. Uh, Wayne says, uh, what is your opinion on low-tech tanks? Do you think aquarium plants can survive and flourish? Yes, definitely. I've got, uh, I've got videos on filterless tanks. Uh, and I would say that um, Ludwigias and uh, Crips and Cabambas, Water Sprite, Wisteria, uh, Valcinaria, Sword Plants, Anubias, mosses all that stuff can survive low light uh to medium light uh it can survive low nutrients and it can i mean it it if if it's set up right and if you've got the nitrates dialed in you can do a lot of cool stuff if if you dial back the nitrates to nothing and then add a little bit of iron it goes a long ways but even not adding iron even not using any liquid fertilizer those tanks in the bedroom that you guys saw, 
in case you weren't here, let's go take a look one more time because these tanks have not had any root tabs or liquidizer in over six months, a year, I don't know, ever, uh, in some cases. But they'll still, like this one, this is a shrimp tank. It's always had this $20 light that's a piece of crap. It has red and blue diodes. But it's got slow and steady growing plants. Uh, we were kind of seeing the bulbitis grow up and out and doing its thing uh, to be uh, become immersed. But I ended up topping off the water a little high last night, actually. Uh, but you can see where the spores were starting to come back into some of the leaves. Like it was going to try to do reproduce outside of that. Also, I added some half beaks to this tank. Uh, I think these are the female half beaks, and that is why I added them to this tank. I don't know, but it's totally possible that they eat all the baby shrimp in this tank. I don't know. They have a mouth that's pretty crazy, and they do seem to be going towards the shrimp, honestly. But then at the same time, I see shrimp down here. And we've got the peaceful pandaloches doing their lovely little thing that they always do, which is being chill. And the crystal shrimp are still doing well. It's just, um, you know, this tank with the... I don't even need to feed this tank. You guys have seen where I just hit it with a turkey baster and it kicks up enough of the detritus worms and things that live off of the plant material that's broken down into the substrate that the shrimp you know, chew off mulm and then they go to the bathroom and, and their algae and stuff. And literally the light from outside and from this little light is enough to keep this tank just rolling along. Um, and, you know, there's snails and things in here too. And they're good indicators on my KH and GH if it's too high or low. And there's lots and lots of planaria in here, which a lot of people think is the end of the world, but... If you've got loaches, they like planaria, some of them. Now, granted, a lot of people will say, I don't think, what are you, uh, planaria, and scream and pull their hair out. But the other thing about planaria is that, um, yes, they, they'll eat your baby shrimp, but so will a, you know, so will, <laughs> name the fish. So will many things that uh, nobody bats an eye at when they see it combined with shrimp. Like, uh, y will it usually eat your shrimp? No, but a CPD could easily eat your shrimp. Um, and then in here, uh, this this is uh, all all floating plants and Ludwigia and uh, and Bacopa. Bacopa is another easy one, and. There are the the two uh, the two uh, lovely bettas in here that had hopefully I'm looking to see where their eggs are and they're all gone so we'll see if they have babies lurking about somewhere but like I said I do see some babies right on the edge of this little baby carrier so but. Also, this, no root tabs, nothing like that. That's algae, that's not moss. And um, again, none of these, no, no root tabs, no fertilizers. So you can do a lot. Um, I mean, look how red this uh, Crip uh, Red is, Crip Spiralis Red. Uh, it's Red Tiger, too. Uh, the red dwarf lily could use some iron or a root tab, definitely could, but uh, it is growing low and starting to carpet. Um, the moss in here is growing differently. So everything, you just have to kind of figure out how things grow and what they're going to do. The, the tank that surprises me is this one. See how the kabamba, none of it's yellow. Well, other there's one piece of kabamba furcata that is yellow, I suppose, right there. But the rest is all very uh, typical American kabamba with the round all the way around. There's some purple. It's a metallic purple like my nails, but um, there's some purple. And then we've got the African barbs in here. But there used to be so many fish in here. And now we've got some gudgeons, some tetras. All, but most everybody else has been moved outside into ponds. Um, 
This is a tank that hasn't had a filter or anything in it for so long. Um, no root tabs or anything. I mean, you can see the iron and everything. I mean, there's all sorts of cyanobacteria and and uh, different structures in here. Yeah, I've got the hill stream species, pandagaras, in here. Uh, and they're doing fine. I don't need to feed them either. They can survive off of shrimp, algae, and biofilm. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's good. My marsh... marsh or meadow killifish. He's doing good. He's in here somewhere. He was doing good last night anyways. Where is he? Yeah, I don't know where he is. But, uh, yeah. And these guys, this tank could use some love for sure. I need to clean all the tanks. But, that's what we were talking about today was burnout. <laughs> um, and... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, so, yeah. But, hey, Mary, how's it going? Good to see you. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Uh, flip this back around. There we go. Alex, so, so my female uh, Aratus turned male and is very aggressive towards all my other fish. Uh, I introduced a couple females to turn his attention away, uh, but he just chases everyone in sight. Any advice? Break up those sight lines, definitely. Um, add more cover if you can. I know with cichlids it can be hard. Sometimes they don't want to have any sort of uh, cover. They want to have rocks and they'll rip out the plants and things. But um, if you can, you know, build a... a get a big piece of rock or even slate tiles and lean them up against a rock or the, the side of the tank and allow like little A-frames to be made uh, if you don't have plants. Or you can do that and then hide it with moss or something too. That works just fine. And then the little A-frame tiles or like kind of little lean-tos you make, that'll break up the line of sight. Um, for other fish, you know, if, if we're just talking in general, shells and logs and things like that break up the line of sight but the other thing i would try if adding more of the opposite gender doesn't sizzle uh settle things out uh you can also try adding another bigger batter fish that's one way to dither fish uh or you can add some little fish that are quick you know something like some danios or something that can take hard water or soft water that are really quick like some zebra daniels or something i don't know if that ruins your vibe i don't know how specialized your tank parameters are but that that is one way that i've found to oftentimes cut aggression like for instance uh my tank where i had pea puffers uh dwarf um rainbow uh praycocks uh, neon uh, rainbow fish and then I had uh, peacock gudgeons they all got along and they all got along because they're all mean angry little fish uh, baddest too actually by the end of that trial and as soon as I took one out or put in something that was not up to snuff like some tetras or something they all started going at each other uh so sometimes it's a weird game of you need to scare them with some another fish that's a little bit out of their uh league but that won't hurt them too badly um so we'll see uh if i can think of a good fish to go with that one but even like siamese algae eaters and things i think the pr water parameters would be a little bit uh a little bit different all right let's see here do 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 came by to hit the like eating soup super chat oh thank you so much uh oh eating supper <laughs> i saw eat uh catch you later he, the the sentence is uh fish and ta tank ticks it said came by to hit the like and then there should be a comma, but there's not. Eating supper, catch y'all later. But it looks like 
came by to hit the like, and then I would say assume button, eating, and then it looks like super chat, but it says super catch, and then y'all later. Uh, uh oh, do I dare? A second one in a day? I better not tell anybody. Don't tell my wife. I just told on myself, I'm sure she heard that. She just got home too. Uh, she wants to go to the lake this evening and I want to scoop out critters from the lake. Uh, all right, let me just try, I'm trying to catch up and make sure that you guys are doing all right. Uh, Morgan, thank you very kindly. I appreciate you. Uh, you have more shrimp than you can deal with, it's me. Uh, Good, right on. Right on. Uh, do, 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 do. Goose Not Maverick, I have a four year old and he likes to paint his own nails with supervision, of course. Today they're orange. A couple of weeks ago they looked like yours. Right on. I mean, do whatever you want. Like, it doesn't have anything to do with gender or whatever. I mean, I do it with my wife. Uh, paint my nails, that is. <laughs> uh, ugh. There's no bottle cap where the plastic nibs are stuck together and sometimes the whole ring comes off. <sighs> Amy, Dr. Pepper. Amy. Um, all right. Well, oh, right. I was going to show you guys something. You like to mention your average planaria is a lot more disturbing and creepy than your average shrimp destroying guppy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 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 uh. You're at a burnout right now. Uh, it started with two, two uh, badass. You're at a burnout. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see here. Steven, Alex, and all cool people who came. Oh, you're lurking and working. Right on. Sounds good. Uh, yeah. Don't bite off more, more than you have to. You know. Seriously, it's summer. Go out and play. Do things that are not fish related. Just get your tanks so that they can <laughs> treat yourself. That's right, Rachel. Uh, get your your tanks so that they just run their themselves. That that should be your ultimate goal. Once you've accomplished that, then you can just let over you, and you just need to throw food in every few. Weeks. The the less you feed fish, the more they're gonna learn to eat algae, to eat the little bugs in the tank, eat the fry of Oh, oh, sorry guys, I lost you for a sec. I got this from Jonah's Aquarium, and it is a dip net. However, I also got extensions, which I did not have before. So now I have this big old pool skimmer of a net, and the net that they use, the material, I'm going to do a whole video on this net. Honestly, I love it so much, and I want to support this U.S. Made in America product and I like their uh, the fact that they sell uh, native fish uh, to the aquarium trade but um, this net is super strong to the point where I can pick up like rocks and um, sticks and things that are sharp with that net and it will not tear or break uh, and I I've, that's what I've been catching all the native fish with if you've been looking at my uh, posts in the community tab uh, I probably will have more member posts tonight, even, of the species that I've been finding. We've we found so many, and some of them look like little Oscars. Yes, the the ACs, uh, all good to go. Life is... Lake stream with a GoPro coming soon? Yeah, no, I've been filming. Uh, I've been out there, I've been filming. I just haven't been editing. It's been a lot of, like... Um, there's a lot of, one, there's a lot of boring footage of splashing and nauseating, like, we tried mounting stuff on the net, bad idea. Uh, I mean, thought it would be a cool idea, it's a cool idea if you're holding still, like, slowly, like, recreating a shot, not a good idea to, to do full speed, um, but, you know, um, yeah. I've not used a kick net for the inverts. I've always used traps, um, like minnow traps or crab traps or bottle traps. I mean, bottle traps, I've literally been using this brand and everything, or Gatorade. Um, get 
smart water. It has this big long bottle that's clear. And then you just cut off the top right here and then flip it upside down. And it literally slides into itself. So then slide it down a little ways. And you've got an inverted funnel then in there. And then you just put some cat food or fish food or whatever you want to put in there. Um, power bait, I don't know, whatever you think would work or fetch. And they'll get in the bottle, have a hard time getting out. Some fish are, are so small that they can go in and out and they're little jerks. But uh, yeah, let's see here. Alex, that is what I had at first. My tanks were perfect. Then I just kept miss messing with them and then the garami started breeding. So I had to, yeah, once you start getting too many babies, it does throw things off. But um, you can always get back there. If you figured it out once, you will get back to a happy stasis. Uh, let's see here. Oh, thank you so much for the super chat, uh, Carrie. I really appreciate it. And the doggy's cute, the little cartoon character. Bravo, bravo. Um, well, I think I'm going to be rolling out. I may actually do um, <laughs> Goose Not Maverick. Yes, in high school. We used to use Sobe bottles, speaking of repurposing bottles for things. Sobe bottles were always the ones we had for some reason. I don't know why those were so popular. That and, um, uh, what was that? Surge was another big popular one. New Mexico Aquatics, I don't have any tips on those catfish. Never kept them. I think they're cool, but I just don't know more than just their basic info, unfortunately. Uh, uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, Sobe glass bottles. That's what I mean, yeah. The, the glass bottles is what I was thinking of. Uh, oh, no, I didn't see it, Regina. I'm so sorry. Hold on, let me see. If I can find it. Thank you for letting me know that you asked the question that I missed, though. And I missed a super chat. Now I feel like a big jerk. Uh, hi. Oh, there it is. All right. Uh, Regina asks, wonder shells for invertebrates, yes or no? Uh, yes. Uh, a lot of people use them. You know, another thing you can use that I hear is just as effective and this is if your water is very neutral or you're using RO water, especially if you're using RO or distilled water, then you kind of need it. Um, but just plaster of Paris, just using actual plaster of Paris, the traditional um, like mold sculpting, uh, not what's the word? It's plaster. <laughs> I don't know how to, it's like a mud. It's like really loose clay that hardens up uh, really that hardens up into just uh, especially when like I had friends who had chickens because they tend to have thicker eggs for some reason than the ones that come from farms and things I don't know if it's steroids or antibiotics or mass farming or time or what it is but um, the wonder shells uh, I don't know if wonder shells are made of plaster of Paris but it would not surprise me if they were Nigel what's up how's it going um, but yeah um, the other thing, yeah, cuddle bones, uh, that the ceiling fan messes with the Wi-Fi. Oh, it could be. It could be. That's a good point. Although, I mean, it's not usually on. It's been on maybe three streams ever. Uh, do, 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 do. We had a couple more quotes. Uh, Wonder Shell uh cuttlefish bones cuttle bones are a great choice too uh and there's lots of other things you can use as well um tums some people use tums uh to get that calcium and, and uh not as much carbon in that but yeah uh but i w i would suggest doing that or you can just use crushed coral i if you've got completely neutral water 7.0 with tds of under say 50 uh, but but assuming it's zero, it's it's RODI water, uh, distilled water. I find that using crushed coral, grade sand, it, sand made out of little teeny shells and coral. I found that that stuff using about a cup per 
mm. 10 gallons gets me to where I need to be uh, for the bare minimum for like neocaridina. Doing a cup per five gallons or, or doubling that, two cups per 10 gallons uh, into the substrate on top of the substrate seems to get me to where I need to be for guppies and live bears. Um, that's just me, but that's what I've found. So that's another option that's really cheap. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Uh, 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 uh. Hey, mains, tails, fins, and fur. I know I need to come join your streams in the morning. I've been out fishing when I'm awake in the morning. Um, oh, I, had, I saw an air pump question, and then I probably got to go, guys. It started with two bettas. <laughs> Thank you so much for the super chat, super duper chat. I'm a jerk. Yes. Uh, do, 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 do. Where did it go? Oh yeah, but also uh, what? Oh, here we go. Ray Cooper. What is a long? What is a long airstone that is powerful enough? Bubbles all along the. Uh, get a get a uh, a bubble wand. It's or or a wash bar or a spray bar. Spray bars technically spray water, but there's also spray bars that you can just hook up to your air pump that just will have dots in them. Or you can make one. You can literally get a piece of PVC, cap it off. As soon as it's pressurized the line, all the holes will then become the same pressure after a certain point in time, uh, within a few seconds. And that's why like when you're pressurized, if you're running like five different um, sponge filters off of one air pump, we should do an episode on the physics of that because I don't know them all and I'd love to be taught. The other thing I'm also trying to get is uh, to do a real necropsy or AKA fish autopsy uh, on the channel, knowing, learning how to do that from a veterinarian, um, or from a biologist, a marine biologist, uh, fish, uh, but that there's lots of things in the works, just so you guys know, um, including that, including Ivan, um, uh, me, me, Koji, uh, who, I love his stuff. Um, all right, let's see here. Uh, do you think uh, regular seashells would increase calcium in the water? Totally, yes, you can use regular seashells to too. Uh, the more they're broken down, the better. Uh, the more, And it's simply just a matter of surface area, usually, in my opinion. But uh, when you break a shell too, there are micro fractures that form all along the edges. And that really gives you a, a more surface area in the shell, like we were talking about earlier with beneficial bacteria. Just more area that bacteria will colonize. And it's not necessarily that you break a shell and then the dust goes into your tank and then all of a sudden you've got uh, a calcium in your water. It's actually the bacteria and the animals eating mulm and eating algae and eating biofilm off those surfaces they scrape away some of the calcium and carbonate, calcium carbonate, uh, and they will then digest it. Then it becomes bioavailable in the system oftentimes. And that's true with many things like iron as well. The iron you add to your aquarium that in caps, that your plants can't just absorb that as is. It needs to be, you know, it, it is oxidated and everything, but it needs to be uh, in its organic, in an orga organic compound uh, situation that is uh, bioavailable, which means that, that it, it can be absorbed through the plant and metabolized. See here. All right, last question, guys. Uh, Michael Voris. Uh, let's see here. Um, Working on a 29-gallon Amazon tank, can I have some interesting stocking suggestions? Looking for something with a great personality, will get along with small Tetras, auto sinkless, no rams or apistos. Yeah, I think a wood cat tank would be really cool. Get uh, look at the um, mini orcas or honey uh, ninja wood cats or. Uh, the 
honeycomb or oil slick those are all cool wood cats they're kind of a nocturnal uh, species if you have a log or something that they can hide under but it's not so hidden like plant wise that they, they just disappear completely underneath something that's kind of cool um, and then with them you know you could ha have corridoras or something too they get along to fine together uh, but those are a catfish um, that's pretty cool and they're from the Amazon and the wood cats there's about 30 or 40 species of them and there's uh, little squeaker ones too that are pretty cool that get um, about eight inches long they're a little bit bigger but I mean the ninja wood cats uh, and the uh, oil slick and the honeycomb and the driftwood those ones are all and the mini orca or killer whale ones uh, and I've done species profiles on those so you can find them uh, those are really fun and they're cool to watch they feed like a bass like when they do strike if you have blood worms at night they just nail hard. You have to be careful that they don't jump out of the tank. Other fish you could do uh, that would be really fun in a 29 gallon. Um, you know, that's kind of a taller tank rather than a longer tank surface area wise. Um, so, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is always some sort of, you know, angel or tetra that's taller, but I think honestly just having some really teeny um, tetras but a lot of them always looks really good. Uh, that's not a lot of personality, I know that's not a showstopper, but it can pair well. Like uh, reed tetras and Corydora habrosis, they're both just silver fish with lines and dots on them, but they school together as well as ember tetras. Um, and reed tetras or kitty tetras and the Corydora habrosis, they will, uh, they're, they're small, which is nice, they're both under an inch, and they will, uh, the, the quarries will just bounce around all over day and night and go up and down the glass, they breed easily, they're funny to watch, and then they also, um, they also will come up and school with the kitty uh, tetras or um, with the, the reed tetras, which is really cool. Uh, speaking of seashells, how do I know if it's safe for a fresh aquarium? I live in California. All the beaches near me have nothing but mussel shells. Uh, afraid it has lots of salt. Boil it. Just boil it. If it's a shell, just boil it. Um, you should be fine. You can probably be fine just rinsing it, but, um, yeah. Is the phosphate that is in my tap water absorbable by plants? Yes, it is. Most of it is. Why can't I get Dr. Pepper with cream soda? Uh, the gods are smiling upon me. I don't know what you've done to incur their wrath, but something. Yeah, Asian restaurants oftentimes do have a lot of uh, extra oyster shells uh, that they'll just toss out. Um, Son of Quack says, Wood cats look like pygmy quarries and a Cynodonus catfish had a baby. Yes, they do. They're adorable. Um... I, do, I bought Dr. Pepper today because I was hoping for you to stream, Alex. Good thinking, I must say, but the bottle is now empty. Ah, Mick, here's to you, sir. Glad you could find it. All right, guys, well, I'm going to get out of here. Um, uh, also, if you can't find wood cats at, like, Aquatic Arts or your local fish store, the wet spot sometimes has them. That's where I've usually ordered mine. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you, Super Chatters. Thank you, members, for your ongoing support. Check the community tab. I've been throwing lots of pictures up there of what I've been up to. I'm going to do some of these wild aquarium things next to lakes and stuff. It's a lot of work, a lot of time. But it's how I'm trying to avoid the burnout and offer you guys something new. Hopefully something interesting. And I hope you guys have a wonderful evening. Thanks for the great questions tonight. And uh, if you're feeling burnout, go do something else. Just... Get your tanks in order so that, you you know, add some more plants. Go get some wild plants if you have to. Move some things into some ponds where they can eat mosquito larvae and you don't have to feed them or buy them any food. And let them just auto, let them auto exist for summer. And then uh, you should be good. So, thanks guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you mods and thank you uh, 
everybody here. It's good to see a lot of you. I see some people tonight that were here, I mean, five years ago when the channel was starting. So it makes my heart very full. Uh, have a good night, everyone. I'm going to try to, before dusk, uh, catch a couple more fish. My wife's going to go for a swim. Maybe I'll join her. And uh, I hope you guys have a great night. Uh, guys, take care. Best wishes. And um, I'll probably have another video out soon, too. been working on a bunch of history videos. Just haven't finished <laughs> anyone in particular uh, recently. Uh, but, you know, still on track with the two to three videos a week. So And the two, to two live streams a week. So... Uh, I'm grinding for you guys. Thanks for encouraging me, you guys. Take care. Have a great night. And uh, talk to you guys later. Bye.